managing large groups of people is already hard enough, but what if they're a large group of people with a bunch of instruments? Well, I'm talking to someone who knows how to do just that today on On The Fly Filmmaking. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. Welcome everyone to On The Fly Filmmaking. I'm Mary Lou Mandel, your host, and today I'm talking with the composer of the song you're listening to right now, which is the opening theme, for the upcoming film 9-11, Jeff Toyn. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Pleasure so to be here. Uh, you can find Jeff on Twitter at Jeff Toyn. Are there other social media outlets that you prefer people stalk you at? Uh, you know, my website is uh, jefftoyne.com. Gotcha, yes, that's where I found out a lot of my information and listened to a lot of your work. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so this song that we're listening to right now is the main credits, or the main yeah. opening theme yeah. for 9-11. So uh, I'd like to start by talking a little bit about that movie. I know that the premiere was last night and that comes out September 8th. Correct. Yes, yeah, so 9-11, something that was a really uh, significant point in a lot of our lives, and now you have to score it. Yeah, it was a, it was a very serious, somber task um, and, a, and a great opportunity. Uh, you know, nobody working on the project entered into it lightly. We all really, you know, took it very seriously. Um, and so what we set out to do in that particular piece of music uh, is, you know, present... Um, at, uh, at that point in the film, it's just a typical New York morning. You know, the, the, the day is starting, people are getting to work, you know, the sun is coming up over, uh, you know, uh, Gotham. And so, um, this is a film that people come to with a lot of, you know, pre-knowledge, a lot of preconceived ideas. Um, so, we, uh, so, I, so we don't have to foreshadow uh, a lot of the drama that's about to unfold. Um, and, and we are introducing, you know, thematic material like the theme that we're going to be bringing back uh, later in the film. Um, late, a little later on in the in the music, you will hear this uh, a single trumpet sound that, uh, with picture, it, it just you know happens to come in when we happen to catch a glimpse of some police just going about their day. Like the first responders mm -hmm. are very important uh, on that day and in the film. So so we attached the the trumpet uh, to to those uh, characters. Uh, and and yeah, we recorded that with uh, with orchestra. Um, and um, yeah, what else can I tell you about it? Yeah, that's great. Okay, so I want to know what then, because this is a film, are you scoring per scene? Do you get the whole movie and then you score it? How does that work for you once it gets to you and your point in production? Well, I can tell you, uh, there's two parts. Uh, I suppose uh, sitting down to the, do the job uh, assumes that you already have the job. So. Right. Uh, so the way that you would get the job uh, can sometimes involve uh, you being given some scenes to to kind of score and, and demo on okay. spec. Okay, it's kind of like an uh, audition. Like an audition. It's actually not that common. It's, it's more common to find out as much as you can about the film, say a one sheet or a paragraph, or occasionally a script, mm -hmm. and then prepare a playlist of music that already exists from your repertoire. Okay. To give pe filmmakers an idea of these are the things that I've done, um, these are the films that I've done in the past. Uh, it's it's not it's not a hundred percent that you're going to be scoring to you know because you may very ideally you may be brought onto the project before they've shot right the picture. Mm -hmm. So 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 uh, auditioning to picture is not is not a, a, a one hundred percent of the time. Uh, in this case, I I did actually. Okay. Uh, they had picture, um, and it was up to uh, to me to show. In particular, they were looking for someone who was going to be able to underscore a movie that eighty uh, percent or more happens in a in a space much smaller than this. Yes. It, just inside an elevator. Right, because the, that movie is based on a play called Elevator, so it's the it's the whole it, it's all from this one place. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. We get the characters into the elevator, and almost all the drama unfolds mm -hmm. uh, in that elevator, and they're helped by. Uh, the elevator uh, operator, played by Whoopi Goldberg, yes. who, who can communicate with them through the intercom. Uh, so the music is, is not bombastic; it's not overwrought. It's it's really an exercise in restraint, and so and so I needed to to show that uh, during the uh, demonstration process, but during the pitch, that that, that, I, that you know that I might that I would get it, mm -hmm. that I would be able to do that, right. um, and so. There's only a couple places where the music really gets to uh, kind of uh, be more than than a very very you know like say subtle with a B 
mm-hmm. uh, underscore. Okay. Um, and that's the, the opening credits that you've heard. We get you know to set a nice Hollywood movie opening scene, mm-hmm. set the scene. Uh, we'll get a, we get a couple of chances here and there in the film, and then the end credits we get to play. And people get to take a breath. Yes. Um, and then so we get to play out there. But most of the film, uh, we don't use the orchestra, actually. We're, it's, it's more about uh, electronic elements mm-hmm. and, and, like I said, very subtle elements and, and these distorted elements and, and working to create a very tense, claustrophobic atmosphere. Right. Uh, and to stay out of the actor's way, I mean, because these guys really tore it up. They're, yeah. They're some really great performances in the film. So then the, this is, a lot of this is very orchestral. When you were doing your like audition piece, did you go like get an orchestra and say, hey, guys, let's make this? Or, or is it all on your computer? Uh, it depends. It's, it's, absolute, it's not unheard of to record a demo with an orchestra. If you want mm-hmm. that sound um, and, and you think it's worth it, uh, the, you can do a demo rate yeah. with an orchestra. Uh, more often, it's much more common to, to demonstrate uh, using uh, samples and synths and, and, and do a, a virtual uh, mock-up mm-hmm. uh, and we and we've spent a lot of time uh, getting our, our mock-ups to sound as convincing as possible yeah so that's 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 most common do you Absolutely. play a lot of instruments mm, no not in, not that I would say I play them mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't insult actual musicians who play these instruments by saying I also mm-hmm. play I, you know I'm a, more of a guitar owner okay than a guitar player um, and I yeah I can you know I, I studied piano for a very 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 long time but I've I became a composer when it became clear that being a, a concert performer on the piano wasn't yeah. wasn't realistic. So. Oh, that's so interesting because I don't know much about being a composer and much about music at all. But you know, to think that the composer actually doesn't need to know all the instruments, you just need to know how to make them work together. Well, when you say need to know, well, you know them. You, you're yeah, not no, like I, I don't play the viola, but I can tell you the range of the viola and mm-hmm. how the viola is played uh, idiomatically. And it's really important for me mm-hmm. to know that instrument really, really well, especially as an orchestrator. Um, but I don't put in the hours every day right. um, uh, playing viola, and so I don't play it uh, at a professional level uh, or an amateur level. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely, yeah, in order to, to write well for these instruments, mm-hmm. you, you do have to become intimately knowledgeable about them. Absolutely. Yeah. We, I mean, we studied, I went to school for a long time. Gotcha. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I believe it, I believe it. So let's talk about that. Uh, what, were you, what were you studying that got you on the path? To becoming a composer, you said that you you realized you weren't going to be a, a concert musician. Right, right. Uh, yeah, at the time, at that time, I was I was practicing about eight hours a day. Okay, uh, what were you was, playing? Uh, that was piano. Piano, okay. Uh, and uh, I play keyboards, but it's the computer kind. Right, like just typing things very fast. Oh, the computer. Oh, I yeah. ASCF. Oh, yeah. QWERTY. Yeah. I type oh. very fast. <laughs> very good. That's good. Um, you know, there are pieces of music written for typewriter. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a couple of uh, pieces of music that in- involve typewriter and orchestra. Nice. Uh, so you could be involved with the orchestra that way. Oh my gosh, I, it would be a dream. <laughs> like I don't know how any of this sounds, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, the beginning of uh, Dario Marinelli's score to Atonement. Okay. Has typewriter in the orchestra. Oh yeah. All right. And then it's a cheat because it's it's so there's also a typewriter in that scene. Uh huh. Oh, so then it's like, wait, what's the sound? And I was like the only person who was bothered by this that it was a conflagration of whether we're hearing her playing the typewriter or the mm-hmm. music's playing a typewriter. Sometimes it works really great when you confuse source and score, like the music the characters can hear versus the music that's underscoring mm-hmm. the drama, like the opening to um, uh, Kubrick's film with. Um, the, the married couple that were divorced, uh, Tom Cruise and... Eyes Wide Shut? Eyes Wide Shut. Yes. Sorry. So, yeah. yeah, so the beginning of that film, you hear this great grand waltz, and it sounds like the opening titles mm-hmm. of a film, and then Nicole Kidman goes up and turns it off the radio, and the music stops. Ah. And, and it turns out that you've been hearing the music that the characters yes. hear, and they switched it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I also, I like the device of when you hear something that sounds like a score, and then it turns into sounding like it's in the radio. Yeah, and they'll affect that uh, mm-hmm. using the EQ, so it's, it's, yeah. it goes from this big full sound to the sound of coming out of a small speaker. Yeah, and that's really neat as a, a source of storytelling. You know, like the, having it turn off, like you think it's the score and then they just shut it off. Like, oh, now I feel disjointed, now I feel, and it kind of sets the tone for the rest of this really weird movie. Well, when you think about the act of watching films, you know, we all agree to sit in a dark room and watch the mm-hmm. character and we have the fourth wall. Mm-hmm. And, but beyond, on the other side of the fourth wall, like all, if it's a, a realistic, uh, uh, story like all of the rules of our reality those characters have to obey except that there's music underneath the whole thing yeah you know we're and we're perfectly comfortable accepting that as an audience mm-hmm. um, in fact it's quite it's quite common 
to get a note saying, look, look, we want this to sound like a Hollywood movie. We want people to be comfortable. There's a certain style of music, and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the orchestra plays into that. We've become, become accustomed to the orchestra sound. That makes us know, oh, we're in a movie. It's a Hollywood movie. We're in the theater. This is, you know, we can be comfortable and watch, and yeah. we know we're going to see a story. Yeah, totally. It feels like it's like the warm blanket that says, like, okay, here, we're, we're doing this now. Yeah, I mean, you can work against that, uh, or, or you can, uh, you know, at your at your peril, mm -hmm. uh, or or you can use it to your advantage. Um, but it's it's you know the cliches um, are the tools of the trade for, mm -hmm. for film. Yeah, great. So we've talked about a bunch of instruments. So we we didn't, I want to get into your education. Oh right, sorry. Yes. It's okay. We started there. We came back, but go watch Eyes Wide Shut. It's very <laughs> interesting, and I love that movie, but it makes me feel weird. Uh, but let's right. talk about so, your, your education, right. getting so, you into um, being a music composer. So yeah, following high school, um, I decided to get a music degree um, and that started off as a music degree with a hope towards a performance uh, career. Then the undergraduate switched towards uh, composition. Uh, and then I did a, uh, a master's degree after that uh, in composition. And my schools kind of continually moved like south and west, south and west until I ended up, and then in, you ended up here in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then, yeah, as I was studying, and so I studied classical, you know, I did a, like a, a kind of a strict classical education, uh, music-wise, mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, I did uh, have, I have a couple, a little bit of uh, legit jazz uh, studies as well. Um, and and then in addition to that, you know, I played uh, in blues bands on the side. And, yeah. And, um, and, you know, uh, campfire guitar and things uh -huh. like that. Uh, and so my music ended up... Uh, it's very eclectic. My tastes are eclectic. My music uh, was eclectic, and and it sounded like film music. A lot of mm -hmm. my, my concert music that I was writing as a as a student. So so that so that combined with, um, you know, I always felt that films today, modern films, uh, represented uh, or or were uh, uh, a fruition of of uh, Wagner's idea of Gesamtkunstwerk, mm -hmm. total artwork. Yes. Okay. So his his idea of a total artwork where all the different uh, arts come together to create one enveloping artwork. You know, dance yes. and literature and theater and design and painting and music. And exactly. Theater. Which is what we we talk about here on on the fly filmmaking a lot is this bigger collaborative effort to create something for entertainment value or create the art. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I, I was really keen to to be a part of a collaborative art mm -hmm. uh, form, and and I felt that that reaching a large audience with like a popular medium like film um, was very interesting, and and also was going to be a way that I was going to actually be in the studio with large orchestras a lot more often than if I was going to pursue a concert career uh -huh. and try and have my you know works performed just by symphonies. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's that's what led me into film. Great. So, was there a, a first big break that really shifted you into film? Hmm. Well, ironically, the first film I ever did was a feature-length film uh -huh. uh, that had a live orchestra, um, and then the soundtrack was released. Um, and that was through a, 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 an unusual set of circumstances. What was I, it? Uh, I was a radio DJ. Okay. And I played uh, the music that the students were, the students would record their recitals mm -hmm. during the course of the year at the music school. And those archive recordings, I would then take and play on the radio as like a classical music show. Okay. Uh, Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. Nice. You know, I you played. A big I, audience. I played to cows and and the farmers feeding those cows, uh -huh. and um, and I don't think anybody else heard me. <laughs> uh, but uh, through through being through doing that show, I developed a relationship with the student council president of the music faculty, and uh, a little later on, the a filmmaker at the university uh, who was an uh, an art, uh, he was actually an art professor at the university, but he was making a film, and he said, "Well, I need music for my film. I'm going to the." music faculty. I'll talk to the student council president. She should know all the students in the faculty. She can point me towards a composer. And that girl knew no composers except for me. Uh, because it, And she didn't know me because I was a composer. She just happened to know me because I was a radio DJ uh, spinning these classical uh -huh. uh, pieces. So, so introdu she introduced me to this artist. His name is David Clark. He, he works on the East Coast in Canada um, at the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design. And he's an amazing uh, creative uh, force and he wanted to make a film and his film uh, was the first project I ever did for film. I, we did it over a summer uh, and then he got some grants and then we recorded it over another year. So uh, yeah, by the, so like I said, that was my first project and it was a film noir so, the, so it, was, um, it was supposed to be jazz. Mm -hmm. 
and I knew nothing about jazz, uh, but he, I had enthusiasm for the project. He let me uh, do it anyways. And I actually learned jazz kind of like on the job while I was scoring that film. Um, and that was on right around the, the fly. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to like, go to the library and I'm like yeah. signing out books on like how to write jazz. Mm -hmm. um, and I got really lucky because it turned out that the way that I learned uh, about for writing for, uh, for the instruments uh, in that style um, mirrored the amount of money that we had at the time. Uh -huh. And so when we first started out, I thought we'd have money for three instruments, like three, like a trump, one trumpet and one saxophone and, and uh, you know, a, a, a piano and a bass and a drums, like a trio, like mm -hmm. a very, very modest, but a one melodic line for, trump, for brass, one melodic line for mm -hmm. saxophones. Uh, and later we got a grant and I could afford actually like a, a big band, a big band, a big band. Um, so now you've got like four trumpets and yeah. five saxophones and you've got trombones. Um, but I'd already had the music already laid out for single line instruments. And it turns out that this is a really, really, this, to me, like this is a really great way to, to walk into jazz because the, it can be really um, daunting for someone to look at all of these instruments and all of these staves and, and, and think of them vertically. And like, how do I line up all of these instruments playing at once? Well, it turns out that all of the trumpets playing the same line sounds fabulous. Oh, okay. And so if you can't think of anything else and you already have the line, you can just leave it there. Or you can decide how thick you want that line to be. You can harmonize mm -hmm. that line. And um, a lot of the study of jazz arranging has to do with like the intricacies of studying how to thicken that line with harmony. Yeah. Um, but it can be really easy to forget that you're actually writing a line you know, horizontally in, in, in time. You're not, nothing stops. You know, these, with these stacks of chords is, is actually just an academic construct. So. Yeah. Well, that's so neat because then even like, so when you, you're laying, the music has its own layers and then you layer that on top of your image and the performances and then you're thinking in all directions of this art that is collaborative and so this when you're working on this new jazz piece what did you know about the movie other than it was a film noir well uh this uh, filmmaker had terrific influences he wanted to reference like eight other films in his film okay. um and so and, his, and the films that he wanted to reference were like these watershed like afi mm -hmm. you know top 100 films so so i had to watch the cabinet of dr Calieri and uh, you know, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey and uh, The 400 Blows and uh, um, all of these really, uh, you know, iconic films. So, uh, so that was actually like a great, like, jumpstart uh, to film education, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to watch these films. And then he wanted to reference them in his film. And we got really, I got really lucky again uh, because that film, because it's film noir, um, you know, the cliche of the, the, the PI does his voiceover and you have like the, the cool jazz uh -huh. under the under the voiceover. Well, there's nothing hard synced about that. Like you're not hitting some action. It's not like an animation where you you know you're you're hitting right. all the action point to point to point. And it's not even like a like a chase movie or a, a, a um, uh, any film where you have to hit something that happens on the screen. I, it was generally you know something that uh, like a DJ could do or somebody could do. Uh, you know, uh, detective talks, play the play the jazz. Yes. Um, and I didn't have the technical ability to synchronize music to film at the time. Mm -hmm. I had just come out of music school. Right. You're just I, kind of making a song and say, play, play it. Yeah. Play I had it. the ability at that time, the music school that I had described had given me the ability to write music and, and I didn't learn the, the, the production and the synchronization and all the technical things that come until I come down to LA years and years later. Um, and by the time I came down, I was very hungry to know this because I'd already tried to do it without the information. It was, right. and it was extremely difficult. So, uh, um, but luckily, like I said, I wasn't trying to hit uh, a rabbit in a cartoon. And mm -hmm. so I, I kind of got away with actually not knowing how to right. synchronize. And I I, this was back in the day when, I mean, uh, this will, you know, uh, tell you how old I am. I mean, I had to press play on a VCR uh -huh. and then I had a, an old, uh, computer that, uh, used a, a notation program just, uh -huh. and it would play back your notation and it sounded like a video game. Okay. Um, but the longer that your piece of music was, the longer it would take to pre-generate the, the sound demo for you. Yeah. So I had to press that, figure out how long that was going to be and then press the play on the tape <laughs> and then maybe they'll line up and I could watch it. And, but you know, not, there's no hard, there's no hard sync to it at all. Yeah. Kids have it too easy today. Right? <laughs> Am I, right? No, like, I, I can't imagine when I think about just technologies in general that, you know, the stuff that was difficult, like when we might have been learning about things and now what things are now are easy, but what's going to come next where like the younger generations are like back, I, well, I had to like take a photo on my cell phone and to push a button. Now it's, it's going to be like, oh, it just exists. My life is broadcast all the time. You know, just like technology is always changing. Well, you know, the, you, the, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Yeah. I mean, yes, you, we don't really have to think about, think about how the movie gets synchronized, it comes in a little QuickTime file, somebody mm -hmm. emailed it to you and you can start working. 
Um, but if you, you know, drop your laptop in the pool, mm-hmm. you're... Wah, wah. Yeah, it's up. So. Awesome. So uh, I want to talk about uh, some of the, the instruments and, and working with an orchestra, but before that, I want to show a clip of you playing with some unconventional kind of instruments. Okay. So basically, make a little video here. Steve uh, couldn't be with us, so I wanted to show him what we were doing. Uh, we were working hard on the film here. In lieu of uh, Steve's choice of beer, we have Canadian beer. Oh, you have, you have one of these too? Yeah, no, I'm good. Never even told about it. All right. So we endeavored to uh, you know, change the levels of beer so that we get the different pitches. Uh, and right now we're trying to get a low C. Well, as low as we can get, we can't add any more uh, liquid to that one. We have a C sharp, D. D sharp. Is that too sharp? Can you give me a give me E over there? Well, That's so great. So good boys. <laughs> Yeah, we couldn't think of any other way to get the beer out. Yeah, other yeah. than drinking it. Yeah. That's great. And you said it's Canadian beer. Well, I'm Canadian. Yeah. yeah. So which beer is this? It's Moosehead. So we, Moosehead. Uh, Can yeah. you get that in the States? I think you, you should have brought me some today. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it would be a good day for a cold Moosehead. That'd be yes, great. it's very warm out in LA today. So I, I saw that you guys are matching to the piano and you can actually hear how it matches. So like music is so out of my realm that like you could play that night. It doesn't make any sense to me. So, but you can hear that and say like, oh, this is the same note. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good. So I think that's good with this video. Uh, So, yeah. So this, what were you doing here and why were we, uh, why were you using the beer bottles? Was it just for fun or it was actually for something? Well, um, yeah, we, we wanted to, look, we don't, we don't cure cancer. You know, the, the work, uh, so there's no reason for us not to have a good time in the studio. Um, now, but I don't want to be too flipped because the film that we were working on there was a, was a, was a film that was, that was, uh, seriously looking at alcoholism. Mm-hmm. And so unfortunately we weren't looking at it that seriously, but, um, but what, at the, at the moment, but what, what I wanted to do was, uh, you know, create a little bit of a, a construct and, and, and see if it was possible to, to generate, uh, some musical material, uh, like directly connected to this idea of, mm-hmm. uh, drinking beer. Um, and of course, yeah, if you move, remove the liquid from the bottles, you can get the bottles to place different pitches. So we did that. Uh, we recorded each of the pitches and we bring them into the computer and then we can actually map them to mm-hmm. a keyboard and then, and then we can play them without having to like uh, actually physically play the bottles. We, you know, we put them into a, into a keyboard and we can yeah. play them on the keyboard. And that's something that like an aspiring composer could do or a musician that's, or somebody who's trying to make music or sounds for their film is take some unconventional things, record the sounds, bring them in and see what you can work with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's 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 pretty uh, common. There's there's a couple of films that came out recently where where composers actually constructed instruments uh, mm-hmm. specifically to to create sounds for the film. I'm thinking of uh, uh, Mark Corvin's, uh What did he call it? It was called like a tension. Uh, he he made a specific instrument for the movie The Witch. Okay. Um, there was like a for a horror movie. Uh, he wanted to make some scary sounds, um, and uh, it's possible to uh, I you know. Uh, Generally, I mean, you're um, uh, you want to just make the most interesting sounds, and you just want it doesn't, it doesn't really matter where it comes from. Yeah. an interesting sound is an interesting sound. Right, and did that have um, to be beer, or is that any liquid for for what you were doing there? Yeah, no. In this case, uh, like, you know, we beer wanted and water make a different sound. Maybe. Yeah. I I don't think they would have. Um, mm-hmm. In this case, if it if uh, if it didn't sound good, we wouldn't have used it. Um, and there have been other other really wacky. We didn't. We decided it wasn't appropriate to bring the other video, but on, on other comedies, mm-hmm. we um, we you know we tried to make music with all sorts of things. And yeah. They, okay. They, what they are don't some always... things? Well, I did a movie called um, How to Plan an Orgy in a Small Town. Okay. And so we thought, well, what if we made music using sex toys? Yeah. Uh, well, it turns out not all of them are conducive to music. Yeah. But some of them are. Okay. Uh, what what so. worked and what didn't? Uh, well, uh, the, the very large, uh, dildos made very good, uh, drumsticks. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, the joke's on us because we will probably use those again. They, yeah. They sounded pretty good. Nice. <laughs> uh, but the, the Benoit balls were, were not. Oh, and you that, would think that they would. Yeah. Well, they have like a bit of a ring, but, um, but they weren't, they, yeah, they just weren't that interesting. Okay. So yeah, interesting. So. Yeah. You, you try things out, like all for the art. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Why not? Awesome. So uh, you've got your unconventional instruments, but now let's see you working with a large group of very professional instruments. 
Okay. That's great. So that's beautiful. So you're here composing and you're, how many people are in this room? Conducting. Conducting. You're conducting. Sorry. Yeah. I see. I don't know anything about music here. So you're conducting here. How many people are you uh, conducting? Oh, geez. Uh, I think that might be 18 piece, maybe. 18. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. And what's the largest um, orchestra that you have conducted? That I've personally conducted? Yeah. Uh, let me think. Mm, maybe 60. 60. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All those people. Oh, no, unfortunately, I mean, I've worked with much larger orchestras, uh -huh. but, but just not as the conductor. Okay. Yeah. And so in the larger orchestra, what kind of role did you play? Uh, that was as an orchestrator. Okay. Yeah. What does the orchestrator do then? So uh, we talked about uh, using computers to make the, mm -hmm. the uh, demo mock-up, uh, and that's quite common today. So uh, when it comes time to record the, the live musicians, uh, they need parts on their stand to play. And the conductor mm -hmm. needs the score, which has all the parts on it. Um, and so the person that creates the score um, uh, is the, the orchestrator. Okay. So the composer wrote the music, and the, the composer, uh, depending, especially in film, you have uh, very tight uh, time yeah. constraints. So the composer doesn't necessarily have the time to sit down himself and write out the score, mm -hmm. uh, like that scene from Amadeus, mm -hmm. you know, where... where You're going by part for each person? Is that what the orchestrator's doing? We're creating the score, and the score has every person's part in it. Okay. Uh, now, it's actually a different person who makes the parts for each individual player. It's called the copyist. Okay. Uh, so there's a kind of a, there's a path. Like, the composer will make the, especially the, these days, the composer will make the, the demo or the sketch, mm -hmm. right? And that's usually an audio recording that they've made. And, and they've used uh, the computer program to make the audio recording. So we'll take that, and from that we'll, ta we'll create a score. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's what the conductor reads. It has all the parts on one piece of paper. Uh, and then the copyist will take the score, and he'll create an individual part for the cellist and for the flutist and for, wow. for everybody. Oh, my gosh. So, there's just so much. There's so many people. It's just like, yeah. like on a film set, there are so many people and just making music. There's so many people that are involved. Right. So when as so as a as a as a music uh, budget increases and you go to these you know kind of more classical uh, types of uh, ensembles, uh, the number of people working on the on the music on the score for a film uh, can really uh, increase. And and what what's hard to see is on a smaller budget project, you, the the person who's doing the music, the composer, is actually doing the, all of those jobs all combined into one. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so they don't necessarily have separate people. But as but as the as the budgets increase, um, and and you have a, a giant amount of music for a giant number of people, and right. it's going to be recorded. It, it can't possibly be done by one person. You, so you need uh, separate people for each uh, each of these jobs. Right. That's amazing. So, so when you hear a very big piece in a movie, just know that there's probably a lot of people that went into that, or if it's a smaller budget one, maybe not, you know, maybe yeah. somebody like pulled something together. In, in best case scenario, you can see in the, in the credit crawl, uh, yeah. the, the music team credits. So mm -hmm. there'll be like music preparation and then the, the recording team mm -hmm. and there's a music editing team uh, and uh, in, uh, orchestrators and uh, uh, then there'll be, you know, musicians that performed outside of the orchestra, like you know, guitarists or percussionists or gotcha. soloists. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that's 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 it's really, yeah. I've been part of a music team on a, on a, I've been fortunate to work on a, a number of, of large kind of A list uh, Hollywood right uh, blockbuster type things. That's great. Any any projects that stand out as like favorites? Um, well, the most recent uh, was the the Tom Cruise movie, Tom Cruise movie The Mummy. Okay. I worked as an orchestrator uh, for a great composer uh, Brian Tyler. Uh huh. Uh, and that was a big orchestra. That was a really I think that was over a hundred piece orchestra wow. that one. With choir and everything, so it was a, it was a really big, uh, uh, yeah. It was a you know they wanted big horror action mummy music, so great. 
It was tough. It was that was a tough one to work on. All right. So then I'd love to talk about now any advice that you have for somebody who might want to get into this line of work. Okay. Um, there's there's uh, people often talk about how how do I get started in film? How do I you know uh, connect to people who are making films who want music for their films? Um, but there's an assumption, and I, I think it's important just to to to, to just take that off that <clears throat> there is an assumption that you can make great music. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't mean that you went to school, uh, it, but it does mean that you can make great music. So it's important to come to the table um, having honed your art. Uh, and, and it doesn't necessarily um, mean you've honed your art uh, of making music uh, to picture, it, but, but it definitely means you've honed your art of making amazing sounding mm -hmm. music. And, and whether you know your amazing sounding music is I make, you know, the sweetest, quietest, most gentlest music, or I make the loudest, most terrifying music. It, whatever your thing is, that's that's great. But it, there's an assumption that you come to the table already, you know, able to to make amazing music, whatever that happens to be. Right on. So like, while you're making your way towards getting into making music for film, but that's where you can partner with like the independent filmmaker and stuff like that. That you like you said you started with the film noir, like you weren't completely there yet but you went in and you tried and you did some research and you made it work right right but, yeah so he, he came looking for someone who had a music education mm -hmm. and i had had one so yes. so that's um like i said you know like i said it doesn't mean you go to school but like there is an education that you can give yourself yes. uh, or uh, or somehow you know the hone your on your mm -hmm. craft so, so that so once you have that then you then you want to bring that to a film you have something that you can offer something to bring to the film mm -hmm. uh, and then everyone wants to know well where where are these filmmakers hanging out? Yes. I don't know. They're all over the internet. Yeah. You can find them. We're, <laughs> yeah, actually, we're all yeah. hanging out out here. <laughs> that's that's very true. Actually, your film festivals are a great place to, to, to mm -hmm. meet uh, film filmmakers because they're there. They go there. Yeah. And would you suggest that maybe they score some scenes that already exist as like with some like spec scores? You know, I was uh, I was given that advice a long time ago, um, and it's the kind of advice that is easy to give, and no one ever does it. Um, in, in particular, if you have a, like a director that you are just an enormous fan of and you really want to work with that director, mm -hmm. um, the advice goes, you know, yeah, rescore some scenes from their movie and, and send it to them because there's no way they're not going to watch their movie. Yeah. Um, so you could get your music in front of them. Um, yeah, I've heard that advice. I, yeah. I, I, I've never found the time to do it. Um, right. and I don't know anybody that's actually done that, but, but if it, you really it really are... seems like good advice. Yeah. If you're, if you're in a corner and you just don't know what to do yet, I would see that being a good way to practice. Or if you're targeting someone specific, like you said, they're going to watch their movie. Right. You know, so it, it's worth a try. There's lots of creative things that you can do here. A lot of what other people have told us is find a mentor, reach out to people who are doing what you want to do and like volunteer your time, try to intern, try to assist them so you can kind of learn. Have you ever done that or had anybody that you've helped that way? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm both a, a victim and a... Um committer of that crime yes uh so so yeah i worked as assistant uh for a couple of years out after i finished uh, uh usc mm -hmm. um and i have uh people that work for me as assistants now so, yeah uh i think it's important to have um the i mean for myself at, at the point that i'm at it's important you know to have the team in place mm -hmm. uh ready to go uh when they get the call as opposed to like get the call then try to then to try to get team. it's right um it's it's uh, that's a little late Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so we already have the team in, in place. Yeah, so. so it's like having the team in place, which is like also like what you're saying, have the, the skills in place. So when you get the call, you're ready for it. Right. Yeah, no, uh, when we got out of school, one of the difficult things to do was to spend money on gear for a job you don't have yet. Yes. Uh, because you need to already know how to work it mm -hmm. when you get the job. You can't get the job and then be learning how to use not all of the, I mean, maybe one or two little mm -hmm. parts, maybe to get, I do like to kind of uh, acquire something after I've gotten a job as a, like a reward and we're going to use it on yes. this, on this film. I like that, but, but I couldn't just sit down and be like, okay, great. Let me figure out how to use this giant program because I right. got the job. You have to, um, already be, uh, uh, I think it was Picasso said the inspiration should already find you working. Yes. So oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so just you just do what you, you keep do. Keep working just on keep your stuff. Doing it. Yeah, yeah, do the thing. I say that all the time. Just go do the thing. And so, if you are, if you're going to suggest maybe three things, tech or programs or instruments for somebody who's starting to go invest in, what would you recommend? Hmm. Wow, that's a good question. 
Um, I'd say um, a good microphone okay. is always going to be a good microphone. Mm -hmm. um, I always, uh, this sounds a little technical, but it's, I think it's really wise to invest in transducers. Okay. So a transducer is the place where the energy changes form. Mm -hmm. Okay, from air to electricity, um, that, and, and from electricity to air, those are, that's a transducer. So, so a microphone and a, a speaker. Okay. okay. Those are both transducers, and those are both uh, good places to to park your money, because a good microphone from 1950 is still a good microphone, okay. and, a, and a good speaker, mo like a good you know real high quality you know speaker, uh, to be able to monitor to be actually hear really well what it is that you're actually mm -hmm. doing. Um, a good again, a good one from 20 years ago is still a good one today. Right. Do you have so. any recommend like specific recommendations of ones that you like? Hmm. Well. Um, unfortunately, both of those things uh, are a little bit like guitars and, and coffee makers. Like you can spend whatever you want to spend right. on them. Right. Um, so get the best that you can with your budget. Yeah, that's. I, it's not. It's not. It, I, yeah, it's not. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about. Um, that, you know, I have to spend this much. or I have to spend that much. Right. But it's definitely. You know, you. We. I mean, I think we know this advice. When, you know, you buy as much computer as you can buy at the time. Right. Um, but it's the same with uh, the cameras. Like I always, when people ask me for camera recommendations. I was like, well, what is the best we can get with your current budget? Because the best camera is the one that you have on you. And then you can grow into that, but get yeah. the best that you can. Of course, there are like some that are better than others, but right. start where you can the best of what, where you are at currently. So it's a microphone, a transducer speaker. Yeah. Now, those good. things, those things are, you know, you, you need to get the sound in and you need to be able to hear what you're doing. So mm -hmm. those, um, those aren't, uh, you know, given the choice between those and some like a, a, a fun new synthesizer or a, a plug-in or, uh, or something like that. Um, so a program I, that you like to use that's on the computer? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. Composers, uh, there's maybe four or five major uh, sequencing mm -hmm. uh, digital audio workstations called DAWs. Um, and uh, it doesn't actually matter that much which one you use okay. as long as you, uh, but they, be, they become your instrument. Mm -hmm. And so um, in terms of, you know, being able to make your great music, you have to be able to use this DAW to make your, that's part, it becomes part of your, uh, you know, it's like recording studio as instrument. Yes. So, so it's important to be able to, to really, to, to, it, that's a, that's a really good uh, investment of time is to be able to move quickly. Um, what I, what I find, you know, before I got here today, I spent all day just in in mouse click hell, just trying to solve some computer program. And yeah. uh, I'll tell you, whatever you can do to remove as many steps and layers of abstraction between your idea and getting your idea on tape, mm -hmm. or, or your you know, I have this part that I imagine and I want a recording of it. Um, at the so knowing your program really really well for like your shortcuts and and, and how how it works. So that you can really quickly go from having an idea, an idea to the exercising and the, the recording of that idea and getting that idea down on tape. Um, that's, a, that's a really good uh, investment in time to, to be able to do that quickly. Good, good. And so if you start, you get to working, you start making your art. So when the opportunities come, you are available and ready. And then you can get to the level that you're at and go to premieres and fancy premieres. So I want to talk a little <laughs> bit about that. Uh, last night you went to the premiere for 9-11. We did. And how, how was that? It, it's uh, it's a really moving film. It it was uh, uh, to watch it in the theater. It's 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 I, I can't say it's a, a joy because it's a, like I said it's a very serious film. Uh, it um, but it was very affecting and and to watch it with a with an audience um, in a in a theater with a really nice uh, uh, projection system and a really great sound system mm -hmm. was a real uh, privilege. Uh, yeah, I was uh, we yeah we. Um, we had a, a really moving experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a, a friend that was really into music that we would go see movies together, and I can't tell if it's good or bad, if the sound system is good or bad. I, like, it just doesn't click to me because I'm more about the visual. I can tell you if the, like, the image looks bad, but the sound just kind of happens. But this friend, he was like, we can't go to this theater anymore because the audio is terrible. I'm like, oh, fine, with me. But uh, yeah, so like, that's good that you, you can go and you can hear your music played somewhere where it can really do it justice yeah well I'm not I'm not, not a, like a golden eared uh, recording engineer I don't mm -hmm. hear all the way up to 20 uh, kilohertz but uh, um, uh, you know you, you know humans focus on the speech more than anything but um, uh, I think you know a lot of the work that uh, uh, we do as film composers is uh, unnoticed when it's done right 
Uh -huh. And so, you know, you if, as soon as you it's, as soon as something's pulling you out of the story or something's grabbing your attention when it shouldn't be. Yes. Um, then that's where that's that's a problem. That's how I feel about editing. It's like if if you don't notice the editing, then it's good. If you start to notice the editing, then it's like, oh, maybe you, you went in a little too hard. Yeah. Unless you're doing something really stylistic and then it's like, oh, look at that fancy transition. <laughs> but yeah, like so what you're talking about with the, the programs being an instrument, that's how I feel about with the editing programs for, you know, for video. Mm -hmm. You know, so like I use Premiere and like, you know, there's all these different ones that you can use, but like I picked one to learn and they're all good. And I'm sure that's the same with those, with the, the programs that you're talking about is like they probably all can serve you well but pick something and learn it is what my advice would be. Yeah, at the, well, at the end of the day, they all record, rewind, play, mm -hmm. um, edit. Yes. Uh, they, all, they all do that. Um, so it's, it's not as, as crucial that you're doing it on this one or, or that one. Um, frankly, uh, like I said, I, this writing music for film is about writing music quickly. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not about getting it right no matter how long it takes. Yes, that you is, have to get because you're on a time frame. And, yeah. you're, and, and you even told me a little story beforehand of a, who was it that did m improvise the whole theme for Twin Peaks? Oh, uh, Angelo Badalamenti. Yes, so, so tell me that story again so that the audience <laughs> can hear it. <laughs> well, uh, I, I don't want to tell his story for him. And there's a link you can find on, on YouTube of him explaining how he worked with um, uh, Lynch, uh, David Lynch, uh, mm -hmm. on the um, on the theme for uh, Twin Peaks. That is an amazing theme, and and it's something that they created, um, you know, in a in an improvised way together, kind of in the moment. Yes. Um, and that's you know that's a very fun uh, story to hear because it doesn't it doesn't happen that often. Yes. I, I mean, it takes a lot of trust mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you don't have to know the person I think that you're working with uh, right. for a while before you can get to a place where you could improvise and, and do something uh, that um, uh, like that possibly fluid. terrible. Yes, possibly uh, terrible, but so, they did it and it, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that it sounded great. So we'll definitely look up that video and I'll put the link in the description here on the YouTube channel. So uh, yeah, and definitely check out 911 that's coming out soon and all of other uh, Jeff's other work at his website jefftoyne.com and on Twitter at Jeff Toyne. I think you're also on Facebook. Yeah, you I can did, get, you can get to it all the way through the website. Yeah, I did a little bit of internet stalking, but that's my job. Well, I like to I like to have the actual website. I don't want to rely on yes. on, on the uh, the other big brother companies. Yeah, so. gotcha. So, definitely go to jefftoyne.com to check out his work and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed myself. Thank good. You. Good. See, I told you it was going to be easy. <laughs> awesome. I'm Mary Lou Mandel. We will see you next time on On the Fly Filmmaking. You can find me all over the internet at Mary Lou Mandel, and I will catch you next time. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.